Hi guys, welcome to another Diddly theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, we've got a fun one for you today. If I roll down a bit, we've got these little buttons here. And we've actually made them out of blurb modules. They've got a nice little hover effect. And of course, you can link them wherever you want to link. Same as any other button. Really easy to do, and they look really effective. We've actually got these in desktop mode in rows of three. If I open my Chrome Inspector now with the F12, I'm using Google Chrome. On tablet, we've got them as three columns also. And then when we go on mobile, they're going to shrink down into pill-shaped buttons. I change this to iPhone 12. And we've got them in little pill-shaped buttons for the iPhone there. Like I say, really easy to do. Let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's go down where we want to start working and we'll just delete these. And delete that row, delete that row, and that row. And we'll start from scratch. Let's add a new row, a little green button for a row. I'm going to put three columns in mine, obviously put as many or as few in yours as you want. And inside that first left column there, I'm going to put a Divi Blurb module. Now, Blurb modules are absolutely awesome because you can have images, you can have text, you can have icons, you can link them to places. Obviously, put what you want your title to say there. I only want a little bit of content. Got no real content. Really imagining this with a title and a little subtitle there. As you can see, let's put that in over there. Let's close this up a bit. If we roll on down, I want to use an icon rather than an image for mine today. So I'm going to click on image and icon. I'm going to flip the switch to use an icon. If you want to use an image, just click on this field and choose your image. Once you hit use icon, you've got a whole load of icons here to use. And there really is a lot. They've teamed up with Font Awesome. Let's pop that little icon in there. And I'll make it so you can see it easier in a moment. So we've got an icon. We've got a bit of text there. I'm going to go with design. I'm just going to pop that text in the middle. I'm going to go down to text, which will do the heading and the body text at the same time. I'm going to make all my text light in color. Should be able to see it a bit better there. There we go. Great. Now let's give it a bit of a background so it stands out against our background here rather than just having the text and the icon there. Background's always under content. Go down to background, got color, gradient, image, background video, background pattern, or background mask. And you can combine several of these together. I'm going to use a simple color for mine today. Use a black. I'm going to click on the field because I want to see some of that background behind it, especially when we scroll, it makes for a nice effect. So once you click on the field, you'll see a variegated slider. That's opacity. If we pull it down, you start to see the background bleed through a little bit. So pull it down to where you want it so that you can easily read the writing. It's still nice and legible, but you can see some of the image behind. I think that'll work for me about there. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's give it a little bit of space around so it's not buffered up against the bottom there. I'm going to give it a border, slightly curve the corners on desktop here, and then get them more curved as we go to iPad, then finally pill shaped as we go to phone mode. So back over to design. Let's take care of the spacing first with padding. Go down to spacing. I would give it, say, 30 pixels top and bottom. And let's give it 20 pixels left and right. We can change this for mobile and tablet if it's too much. For desktop, that looks about right for me. Obviously, change things to how you want them. Now, for tablet and mobile, we'll change these settings in a moment after we've put the border and everything in, and we'll pop the icon on the left-hand side, perhaps, on the mobile view. So let's put a little border around there. I'm going to go down to border, just below here. I'm going to have mine, say, 10 picks rounded corners. As you can see, there's a rounded those off there. I'm going to do all four sides at once. You can do top, right, bottom, left separately if you want to. I want to give it three pixels. I'm going to make mine purple in color. So that's, I'm going to make my icon that color in a moment also. And I'm going to give it a little glow effect around the outside of that border by giving it some light colored box shadow. So let's go down and box shadow just below. I'm going to select this one right here. 
And for colour, I'm going to put white on there and it'll give it a little glow in the background. If that's a little too bright for you, we can click on the colour and do the same thing with the opacity. Just bring it down a bit until it's kind of how you want it. Or a little sort of backlight sort of effect there. I think that'll work for me. Great. Well, let's make that icon the colour that we want it now. Just going to hit the little paintbrush. It'll take us straight to it. I'll make that purple also. Well, that's working for me. Now, obviously, if you want to use this as a button, you may be able to link it somewhere. If we go back to Content tab now, got a link down below. And you can link the title one place and the whole module somewhere else if you want it. Or just have the whole thing linked to somewhere. Obviously, put in whatever link you want to take your visitors to there. And we're good to go. Well, let's style this thing now for tablet and mobile. So I'm going to go over to design. I'm going to go to icon and icon placement. Now this is common to all DB modules. If you roll over the dark riding, you'll see some little icons appear. Go to the thing that you want to affect. In my case, icon placement here. If there's a little mobile phone type icon, we can go in there and set different values for tablet. And phone. Let's click on tablet and see how it's going to look. We roll on down a little bit. That's okay. I don't mind it being on top of each other on tablet. We could pop it on the left for the tablet and have it in line and change that padding by simply going down to where it says top there and flip it to left. And you've got it on the left hand side. But for the tablet, I think I'm going to leave it on the top there. And you can make it bigger, obviously. Let's flip to phone mode here. Actually, that's OK on the phone, but I'd like to see my icon on the left hand side and have a lot more curved corners. So to make that happen, we can flip it to the left hand side here. There we go, just like that. I want to make that icon a little bit bigger. So we've got image icon width. Let's roll that up Ooh, a little bit too much there. So I want to line it up with a the title there. Something like that's going to work for me. And then we want to give it a lot more rounded corners, perhaps when it's on mobile. To do that, let's close up our image and icon here. We'll go down to border. And where it says rounded corners, let's go over and again hit the little mobile phone icon. Make sure that we're on mobile and we can put in a different map value for mobile. Let's try 50 picks. That should make it sort of pill shaped. Maybe even a bit more. Try 70. There we go. That's kind of nice and rounded there. And we could adjust the padding on the left and push that over a little bit and maybe left align our text here. So let's close up border, spacing, padding. Make sure we're on phone again. Go to the little phone icon, make sure we're in there. And padding on the left, let's uncheck this little chain here because I don't want to have the same on both sides. I'm actually going to give it a little bit more on the left there. Perhaps give it 30 pixels. That's great. And I'm going to left align that text and maybe take that title a little bit down in size. So let's go straight to the title itself. I'm going to hit the paintbrush. And again, hit the little mobile icon because we're working in mobile here. Make sure we do it for mobile. I'm going to left align that text. And I'm going to take it down slightly in size. Let's hit the little mobile phone icon. Now let's just take it down a little bit in size. Let's make it sort of 14. And the actual text itself, body text. Alignment again. Make sure we get it on mobile. I'm going to left align it. And we'll take it down just a little bit in size too. Again, a little mobile icon. Let's take it down perhaps to 12. And obviously make yours whatever size you want. Now you want to double check these on the actual real devices if you've got the option. Because you may need to adjust. Okay, let's take a look at it now on tablet. Yeah, that works for me. I think I might make those corners slightly more on the tablet version. So let's close up our body text here. We'll go back into our border and rounded corners again. Make sure we're on the tablet version. Let's take that up to maybe 30 picks. Yeah, great. So we've got real rounded on phone, 
little bit rounded on tablet and just a tiny bit rounded on desktop. Great. The only other thing I want to do with this, I want to make it grow slightly and have the border and background change on hover. So to do that, still in design, I'm going to close up border. I'm going to go to transform. First little tab here is transform scale, which means make bigger or smaller. I want to create a hover spec, hover effect that makes it bigger. And this is common again to all DV modules. If you roll up over that dark writing again, you'll see a little arrow there. If there is a little arrow, you can create a desktop state when the mouse is not on it. I want to see it exactly as it is there. And when they put the mouse on it, hover state. I'm going to make it grow by 10%. And you can slide it up with a little arrow there. If you've got this checked, it'll do both sides at once. You can increment up and down with the little arrows there. So it's going to grow by about 10% when we hover over it. Also, when we hover, I'm going to change that border to white and the drop shadow to purple, just to make it stand out a little bit more. So let's go back down to our border. Again, we'll go down to border color. Hover over, get the hover state up, a little arrow there. Desktop, that's fine. When we hover over it, you should see it grow. Let's change that border to white. And the box shadow, again, we want to do it on hover, shadow color. When we hover, then we'll make it purple. So it's going to switch around like that. You know, that purple's a little too much. Let's take the opacity down just a little bit on it. Great. Well, that works for me. So we've got that when we hover and that when we're not. Well, once you're happy, we can duplicate this and make our little grid. Let's save the changes now. And I'll duplicate this. Two there. I'm going to drag one of them over here. Just drag with your left mouse and release it where you want it. And we'll take the other one, pop it in the middle. It doesn't matter which one you put where because they're all identical at the moment. Obviously, you want to go in there. Change your link. Change your image and icon. Put a different icon in here. And similar with our next one here. Change your link. Go in, put a different image and icon in there. And obviously you want to change your text as well. But I've got no real text. Great. So we've got three little buttons there. And you can just duplicate this row if you want more than three. By hitting a little duplicate there. Let's hit it again. Now that's great. But on tablet, I'd kind of like to have our three rows together again. So to do that, let's hit the little purple button. We'll take a look at tablet mode. That's okay, but I'd rather have them side by side on tablet. And then if we go to cell phone mode, that works fine too. Those little buttons work fine. And we got our little icon on the left there, which is fantastic. So let's go back to desktop mode. And we have to write a little bit of code just to keep them side by side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the row itself, the green tab for the row. When we go over to advanced, I'm going to go to custom CSS. Again, in the main element, I'm going to roll over and get that little phone type icon up. For tablet mode, I want these to display flex, so they're still in columns of three. So I'm going to say display, and I'll put this down below for anybody that wants to copy and paste, but it's really easy. Flex. And as you can see, that's turned it, that into a row of three now. Let's give it a little bit of margin in between. So let's save our row here. And we'll go back into our little modules there. We'll give them a little bit of padding on the right hand side. To do that, go back into any of these little modules. Going to go to design. Spacing. And again, I just want it on tablet mode. We'll go hit the little phone icon there, go to tablet mode. And let's just perhaps give it five pixels left and right, five PX. And on the right also, 
You see we've got a little bit of a gap there. When I add this to the rest of these here, they'll have more of a gap. And to do this easily, we can save what we've got going on here. Roll on down. And I can copy the styles here, or I can extend the blur of styles to this whole row. I can do the same for our other rows here by copying this style. Copy module style, and right click, paste module style, and I'll do the same thing for the one on the bottom here. Not sure why the CSS is not working on that one. Paste module style. And then we can just extend to the row here. Okay, the last thing we need to do is actually just check this on mobile. So let's go to our mobile view here. And if we roll down on phone view, I don't think it's going to work because we've still got that display flex going on that particular row. So what we need to do is go into that row, green tab, a little cob, over to the advanced custom CSS where we put that display flex. In the mobile phone version, we need to write display block. And that pops them back one on top of each other just like that. Of course, we'll have to do that to these other rows. So let's just copy that. Roll on down to our next row. Advanced custom CSS. Make sure you're on the mobile view. And we'll do exactly the same for our next little row right here. Advanced, custom CSS, mobile, display block. Fantastic. So we've got this on block, which is great. If you want to take a bit of the guttering away from these rows here, you can adjust the padding or the guttering in the row itself. If we look on tablet, we've got little columns of three that work great on the tablet there. And of course on desktop, We've got our original rows. Let's save this, make sure it's all going to work on the front end. We'll exit the Visual Builder. Roll on down to where we were working. And there we have it. There's our little buttons there. We can roll over. And it's got that little hover effect there. And of course, the link's going to take people wherever it is you want to take them. So there you go, guys. There's how to make some awesome little dynamic buttons using blurb modules. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.